So here it is. We have a new large language model completely open sourced by Google. The name of the model is Gemma. So this is the blog that I read today and I thought of experimenting around with Gemma. I have created a unique solution using Gemma so you can kind of read how it's performing with respect to the benchmark and how it's beating the benchmark and competition. My objective in this particular video is to fine tune Gemma for converting English questions to SQL queries. So without wasting any further time, let's kickstart the actual coding section. Now that you have the context in terms of what we'll achieve, let's begin the coding section of this entire video. So what I'll quickly do is I'll kind of take you through the entire process of fine tuning a large language model. So in our current use case, what I'm interested in is fine tuning Gemma. So that is something that I'll show you today. So currently what I'll be using is a GPU instance on Google Colab. You can use Kaggle. There are other platforms. You can use your own local setup if you have like a really high end GPU as well. So the onus is on you in terms of how you want to create the solution or use this. I have a T4 instance running. Also, if you plan to use the Hugging Face version of Gemma, then you'll have to basically accept the terms and conditions mentioned on the Hugging Face site for this particular model. You will then have to use the Hugging Face token in order to access the model. So this is like a couple of steps that you'll have to follow in order to access Gemma. Let me start off the entire coding activity by the installation section. So I'll require the module bits and bytes. I require PEFT. I require TRL. I require Accelerate, I require data sets, and most importantly, I require the Transformers library. So I'll quickly run this cell. The installation is done. Let's move forward to the import section. These are the libraries or these are the modules that I'll require in the entire activity. So I'll quickly run the cell to import all of them into memory. Next thing that I require is the Hugging Face token. So that is something that I've kept as a secret variable in the Google Collab session. So I have my Hugging Face secret key here or the token here. So the first thing that I do is now I create a variable called as model ID, which I'll use for referencing going forward as well. And here I specify the model ID that I want to use. In our case, I'm using the Gemma 2B version. There is a 7B version as well, which is like a bigger model. The next piece of code is basically providing a configuration for the quantization technique called as bits and bytes. Let me break down the entire piece of code for you. The first variable that you pass is load underscore in underscore four bit is set to true. This setting enables loading the model weights in a four bit format. So basically quantization is a technique used to reduce the precision of model weights and activations to lower the bit representations such as four bits. So with this, you are able to then reduce memory usage and improve the overall performance on certain hardwares. This is where this becomes very critical. Moving on to the next piece of information that you're passing, which is BNB underscore four bit underscore quant underscore type equal to NF4. What you're doing here is you're specifying the type of four bit quantization that is used for the model weights. NF4 indicates the specific quantization scheme called as Near field 4 bit quantization. So, a near field 4 bit quantization aims to minimize the quantization error by considering the neighboring weights and activations during the quantization process. Finally, we have the variable called as BNB underscore 4 bit underscore compute underscore D type, and here I set this to B float 16. This setting basically defines the data type to be used for computations during the forward and backward passes of the model. Torch.bfloat16 is a data type that represents the floating point numbers using 16 bits, providing a balance between both precision as well as performance. So with this out of the way, let me go forward and run this particular cell. Now here is the standard process of importing a hugging face model. Here you define the tokenizer and you define the model here. For both the steps, I've basically provided the model ID as well as the hugging face token. And I've also provided the quantization configuration that I've just defined above. With this, what I'll quickly do is I'll run this cell to create an instance of the tokenizer as well as the model. As you can clearly see, we have started downloading the model as well. So that is what we are doing currently. 
So we have the model up and running now. Let's move forward and see whether the model is giving out responses or not. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll create a variable called as text. I'll start by supplying a part of the quote by William Shakespeare. That is our doubts are traitors, comma, and I want Gemma to complete this. Okay. So let's see how our overall base model is performing. And here is the output response that I'm getting. Our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we often might win of might win by fearing to attempt William Shakespeare. Now I want you to check this out if it's correct or not and please comment in the comment section whether this particular quote is correct or not. Okay. Now the basic objective is to fine tune this particular Gemma model for our use case which is natural language questions to SQL. Okay. So which is where the section that follows after this part is where you will now witness the magic of fine tuning. So let's move forward. So the one thing that I'll do is I'll kind of set the variable vant b underscore disabled equal to false. So this is a requirement that you have with respect to fine tuning. There are multiple ways of fine tuning a large language model. But in this section, I'll show you how you can carry out fine tuning using a method called as LoRa or low rank adaptation. Let me now break down the configuration for you. So the first input that you see here, which is R equal to eight. Okay, let's go over one input at a time. R equal to eight is used to set the rank of the low rank adaptation matrices used in the entire fine tuning process. LoRa aims to adapt the weights of certain layers in the model using low rank matrices, which can reduce the number of parameters and thus improve the model efficiency. A higher rank typically allows for more expressive adaptations, but it also increases the overall number of parameters that are there, which is where I've assumed this number is like the optimum number in terms of what I should keep for our use case. Okay. The next piece of input is what are the different parameters that I want to fine tune. So you have the query matrix, the key matrix, the value matrix, etc. So here what I'm doing is I'm specifying the names of the layers in the model, which I want the entire fine tuning to be applied. And finally, the type of task that I'm performing. So this is causal underscore LM. This indicates that the model is being used for a causal language modeling task. So this is something that I've already specified. Now I'll go forward and run this cell to import all the settings into a variable called as LoRa underscore config. Now, if I have to carry out fine tuning, I require some amount of data, which is where we have an amazing data set for natural language to SQL, which is BMC2 SQL create context data is what is available directly on hugging face. So I'll kind of show you the data as well. Let me create multiple cells to show this better. So, so firstly, I'll load all the data that exists into a variable called as data. So now I'll show you the data variable internally. So this is the data that I have. So there are three main features, context, answer and question. And there are total 78,577 rows. If I now go inside and show you the first set of elements that are present. So I'll say data of train and I access the zeroth element. So this is the first sample of my training data set. So I have context, I have answer and I have question. So what we'll be inputting is the question. This is the response that I want from the Gemma model. And this is the context. The reason why we have to supply context is generating natural language to SQL will require the model to understand the schema, which is where the schema is given in form of the context. Okay. Now what I'm doing is I am kind of tokenizing my input tokens. In our case, the inputs are basically question and context, which is where I'll kind of call the map function. I'll pass both my set of inputs into the tokenizer and map it into input tokens. Okay. So I'll quickly run the cell. So now that the tokenization is done, the context as well as the question have been tokenized, which is where you see input IDs and attention mask. Okay. So I hope this makes a lot of sense in terms of how we are going about the entire fine tuning process. Now, in order to create a structured approach in terms of how we have to fine tune it, 
there is some amount of formatting that is required. So I'll pass in a set of input and output. And then basically I want Gemma model to learn this pattern based on the input and output sets I'm providing. Okay. Which is where again, this is like a standard process of fine tuning. So here I define a function called as formatting underscore function. I pass in the text here. Text will have a question context and then the answer. And for every example that comes in, I'm also referencing based on the data that is coming in. Uh, whether what is the question, what is the context and what is the answer. And then I return the entire output in form of a list. So I'll quickly run this cell and import this particular function in memory. So here the provided code firstly configures and initializes a SFTT trainer object for training a neural network or in our case, a large language model using low rank adaptation. So that is something that I'm doing here. So the first input that I pass is the actual model itself. Then I pass the training data set. Now here is where the next challenging piece comes in, wherein I pass the arguments. So here I'm setting some amount of transformer training arguments. It includes a lot of hyperparameters and training configurations such as the batch size, the learning rate, the number of training steps, the logging frequency. All of these are values that I kind of provide in this particular piece of code. Finally, I also provide the configuration that I had defined above and I also provide the formatting function, which is something that I have mentioned here. So all the formatting that has to be done will go through this point and the trainer will kind of handle all the formatting for us. So this in turn is how abstracted the whole fine tuning process is all thanks to the SFT trainer module. So I'll quickly run this cell to create an instance of the trainer module or the trainer object. So finally, we've reached the fine tuning stage. So I'll quickly move forward and start the fine tuning process. So as you can clearly see, the loss is going down with every iteration. So let's wait for the entire 75 iterations to complete. Perfect. So we fine tuned a model using low rank adaptation. And now the model will kind of give out SQL commands based on the input questions that you ask. Let's validate how good the results are. So let's go forward. So here is the question. So again, you will have to be cognizant of the fact in terms of how you've defined the entire say prompt. So here, what I've defined is I have a question. What is the average number of working horses of farms with greater than 45 and the greater than 45 total number of horses? The context is create table farm working horses is an integer variable and the total horses are integers. Okay. So again, the question is what I've laid out. I've given the context and I've supplied the GPU as a device. And finally, I'll go forward and run this cell to see the output now. So here is the output. The answer is select average working horses from farm where total horses are greater than 45. Amazing, isn't it? So now if you take a step back and understand what we've been able to achieve, we've kind of fine tuned it for our use case. And now we can just use it as a prediction model going forward. Isn't this amazing? This is something that I wanted to show you in today's video. I wanted to show you with a real life example in terms of how Gemma is beneficial and how you can start using Gemma right away. If you're watching this video till this point, then I'm assuming you've liked the video. Please press the like button, press the subscribe button, press the bell icon to be notified for amazing videos that I'll create going forward on generative AI. Thank you so much for watching the video.